China. Who now remembers the private of the buffs? Last night, among his fellow roughs, he jested, quaffed and swore, a drunken private of the buffs who had never looked before. Today, beneath the foeman's frown, he stands in Elgin's place, ambassador from Britain's crown and type of all her race. Poor, reckless, rude, low-born, untaught, bewildered and alone, a heart with English instinct fraught, he yet can call his own. A, tear his body limb from limb, bring cord or axe or flame, he only knows that not through him shall England come to shame. Far Kentish hopfields round him seemed like dreams to come and go. Bright leagues of cherry blossom gleamed one sheet of living snow. The smoke above his father's door in grey soft eddyings hung. Must he then watch it rise no more, doomed by himself so young? Yes, honour calls. With strength like steel, he put the vision by. Let dusky Indians whine and kneel, an English lad must die. And thus with eyes that would not shrink, with knee to man unbent, unfaltering on its dreadful brink, to his red grave he went. Vain mightiest fleets of iron framed, vain those all-shattering guns, unless proud England keep untamed the strong heart of her sons. So let his name through Europe ring, a man of mean estate, who died as firm as Sparta's king, because his soul was great.